नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स इट इज संडे टाइम एंड वी वेलकम यू टू आर विराट हिंदुस्तान संगम सोशल मीडिया चैनल्स ऑन आवर प्रोग्राम वर्ड्स ऑफ विजडम ज्ञान गंगा विच वी होस्ट एवरी संडे विद डॉक्टर सुब्रमण्यम स्वामी विथ आर वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड टॉपिकल इशूज विच वी टेक अप टूडेज इशू इज द प्लाइट ऑफ हिंदूज अब्रॉड एंड we will be talking about the situation in bangladesh pakistan afghanistan south africa and all our neighboring countries where hindus have been targeted uh, we have as our guest today along with dr swami we have dr ajay sanke who is a family man in a sense he is a member of the vhs family and he is the president of virat hindustan sangam maharashtra unit and he is the head of the bhakti vedant hospital and has been associated with the iskon movement for more than 3 decades so i thank our viewers across the globe for the support we get on every sunday uh, and more than 141 countries viewers watch this program live and we are on various social media channels and we try to see that we reach out to as much as people as possible on newer and additional platforms so with this i now have to thank my co-host professor arvin chaturvedi from delhi and mr ramesh swami for giving me the support in having this program on every sunday i also thank our technical team led by ashish shetty tejas navalgul gadgi rakesh ishwar ayer swami nathan and vishal mehta for their background support and help for putting this program together so with this opening remarks it's over to dr subramanian swami to initiate today's important discussion on the plight of hindus abroad thank you ah <clears throat> uh, thank you very much jagdish uh, this is a very important in, uh, important and uh, know, in a sense uh, crucial for our nation making uh, subject uh, which uh, we need to address because we are the 80% of india is hindu but we are finding that the plight of hindus is one of abandonment all over the world uh, they are attacked and there is hardly any response from the indian government and, uh, and therefore they are they are left to fend for themselves alone which is a terrible thing it happens to no other community it happened the christians the entire christian lobby all over the world come in same thing with the islamic uh people so uh this is one of the weaknesses of our hindu society that uh we uh, unless something happens to us we don't uh, uh take notice but anyway let me say that the word hindu in the constitution is defined as not only including uh, those who we call in day to day language as hindu but also in article 25 which is about the fundamental right for religion it defines hindu as uh, also including sikhs buddhists and jains so i mean it's a, a very broad definition uh, and uh, but no one uh, from the other communities have objected to this being in the constitution or wanted a constitution amendment with that um, uh, in mind i would say that we have about 18 million hindus around the world abroad uh, and uh, and uh, the uh, we we can say that they are in three distinct groups uh, the first one is the indentured labor the british uh, british took um, uh, has to work on plantations and work on very hard hardship work digging etc etc those people who then stayed on so they are people who like people in fiji mauritius seychelles west indies these are people who were taken as, uh, as laborers and then abandoned there and they couldn't come back the generations after generations they've been there so, but they have preserved the hindu uh, identity and religion where i myself have seen uh, jagdish also had come with me to in trinidad in west indies i would say uh, i know about people who have gone to fiji and report the same thing so this is the uh, batch which in the mid uh, uh, 19th century were taken for, uh, forcibly to do labor and they were called the indentured labor because 
and they were more or less uh, slaves. Uh, then uh, we, we had people who went for business, like uh, the Gujaratis went to East Africa, uh, and the Tamils went to Malaysia, and so on. So there, there, there was a migration of uh, our Hindus um, uh, in this category, people who wanted to do commercial activity and uh, saw that they had a prospect uh, much better there. And the third one is the IT group, uh, the professional group, uh, the, uh, the groups uh, that are, uh, uh, you know, uh, what we, uh, people call as white collar. Uh, and uh, that group uh, came really after 1965, particularly United States, Canada, uh, and uh, Europe. And uh, these people prospered, they became rich, and they become a very, very, uh, you know, wealthy community. So this is the third. But surprisingly, with all these different layers, they all face, um, uh, you know, discrimination. They face attacks, social attacks. They go to a, they go to a restaurant. They are likely to be confronted and beaten up. Uh, all these things have been reported nowadays, and this is happening increasingly. And so this this discussion is to uh, to uh, to focus on. How do we uh, go forward? Now, about nine countries have been listed by various agencies of the world, human rights agencies of the world, which, uh, uh, which, uh, where they say that uh, Hindus have been targeted as Hindus. And that includes uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Malaysia, um, and uh, like that. And the latest being South Africa. South Africa didn't have earlier on, but recently uh, this has uh, uh, accelerated, maybe because the South African Indians also began getting prosperous and this was causing a problem. So uh, we, uh, we are a so-called secular country, so we don't seem to bother uh, about... Uh, uh, we don't seem to bother about Hindus in particular. Uh, they, we treat them, you know, they, they, even our statements are uh, Indians are uh, being uh, being targeted when in fact it's not the Indians. Yes, Muslims are targeted in some place, but their tar target is not as Indians, but as uh, Muslims, as a part of the uh, 51 countries of the world which are Islamic. So therefore, uh, uh, what we uh, what, what has come is uh, in India itself, we had a situation where Hindu terror was propagated by the Congress Party, and Hindus were targeted. False cases were put on them. Torture was done to them, uh, and so on. So uh, we have uh, even within India, uh, Hindus are not safe, even though they are eighty percent. So therefore, uh, I think it's about time uh, the some of us as Hindus, we should articulate this issue. Uh, other communities want to join us and help us in this. We'll welcome it because then in turn, we will also help them when they are in difficulty. But uh, the consolidation should take place. And these all these divisions, artificial divisions of Aryan, Dravidian, uh, Brahmin, Kshatriya, and all these are not these are not uh, permanent divisions. These are according to, in the case of the uh, Abharna system, it's based, we know, uh, on, on, on the profession you are in. If you are a Jnani and a Tyagi and a Sasi, you become a Brahmin. If you are a military man, you become a Kshatriya. Like that, it was, it was never, uh, you know, who's your father and what ka Abharna he had. So we need now to um, uh, begin exploring methods by which the unity of Hindu comes. And then only, I think, we'll be a force abroad to save the Hindus there. There should be no distinction, Gujarati, Madrasi, this, this all these things must go. So in that uh, way, uh, we, uh, what the work done by people like uh, um, Rajiv Malhotra and others on rectifying and defalsifying our history it's very important. What is this Aryan Dravidian uh, business? Uh, there's no support for it. According to DNA studies, uh, genetic studies, uh, all Indians have the same DNA. So therefore, all these are 
uh, you know, um, uh, things which shouldn't be. Uh, uh, we shouldn't allow these things to divide the Hindus. So, um, in the United States, surprisingly, Hindus are nowadays being targeted for being, you know, believing in Hindutva. <laughs> it's a very strange uh, uh, phenomenon. But I think undercurrent is Indians have done very well. Now they have become heads of corporation like Microsoft, there's that, you know, so many um, famous large cons uh, corporations, they become head of it. Uh, we had an Indian lady who was uh, heading uh, Pepsi Cola uh, and so on. So uh, this is one of the reasons where, uh, why it is causing some issues. But the fact is we have to deal with it. And uh, we have find that instead of dealing with it, there are, there are forces in the United States amongst the uh, Indians, either born or domiciled, who are actually uh, falling prey to this uh, thing and making out somehow that Hindutva is a is a is a fascist uh, uh, movement. So we have to get to get to it. There has been an undercurrent. You see, after this Y two K, uh, that is uh, uh, the fear that the computer will not be able to read zero zero of two thousand as two thousand uh, AD, but. Sorry, folks, we're having some difficulty with Dr. Swami's camera, so we'll be right back. Um, Dr. Sanke, uh, you can uh, start uh, when we before we get Dr. Swami back on. Okay, th <coughs> thank you, Ramesh, and uh, thank you, VHS, for giving this important topic uh, so much importance that we immediately reacted to this particular incident in Bangladesh. And I'm here on uh, sort of representing two things. One is the VHS and another is uh, ISCOM because I'm a follower of ISCOM for the last three decades. Uh, so it's a very important subject. Uh, it's a wake up call for all the Hindus. The way it is uh, going Dr. on. Sake. Uh, okay, Dr. Swami is back. Yeah. Yes, uh, Sanke, it's all yours now. Yeah, no, I I just had begun, sir. So, but if you want to complete whatever you are saying, then please complete. Then I can start. And this is what I usually do. Not even today, I've sort of ex exceeded by five minutes. Otherwise, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, I'm grateful to uh, Dr. Swami and uh, VHS for uh, creating this platform uh, where we can frankly speak on issues uh, which are generally seen as difficult issues, but they're extremely important. It's a wake-up call for all the Hindus that such kind of brutal attacks have been happening. And as an ISKCON follower, uh, I spoke to our ISKCON people in uh, Bangladesh yesterday and today. And when I hear their stories and uh, read whatever they have sent me, see the photographs, it's very heartbreaking and I must share my anguish with all those people who have suffered, not only ISKCON, but all other Hindus in Bangladesh recently on 15th of October, uh, just three, three days back on last Friday. So I will just break up my uh, talk into three things. One is the first is the Bangladesh issue. What is the current scenario there? And uh, uh, then I will just talk a little bit about ISKCON. Uh, what is ISKCON? What is it doing all over the world? And then give my some thoughts on uh, what way we can go forward as a Hindu or as an Indian. So when I spoke to these devotees, uh, I could see the, I could palpably feel that there is such fear and that is the reason actually I did not want them to come on the show uh, because it is a safety issue for them. So that's why I decided that I will speak myself rather than inviting them and therefore I will just read uh, what is the Bangladesh ISKCON has sent to the Prime Minister of Bangladesh which gives a very clear picture of what's happening there. I'll read that later. 
and then i will show some pictures which are uh, taken from there and then we'll go to the next part so i'm just reading it as it is to the honorable prime minister of people's republic of bangladesh we are extremely distraught to inform you that over the last few days we have been informed through the media and citizens of sanatan religion that radical extremists have attacked in an organized and strategically coordinated manner hundreds and hundreds of temples in many districts of bangladesh in order to vanish the identity of hindus from our glorious nation specifically in komila chandpur naukali chatagram cox bazar burning of hindu shops houses institutions and deities has been reported to us through the media and the people in general in this way such hateful groups have vanquished the joys and happiness of the hindus celebrating durga puja into ashes during this shameful rampage local radical extremists of chaumohani attacked the iskon shri shri radha krishna gaur nityananda temple on october 15 2021 at 3 pm on friday that is last friday from early hours of friday morning they recruited and encouraged many people by spreading spiteful commands to attack hindus so you can see that this is exactly like what has happened in kashmir considering these dangerous circumstances iskon temple authority requested again and again to local thana administration for adequate safety however iskon's pleas for safety were ignored by the local thana authorities seizing this gross neglect of duty from the authorities approximately 500 muslim radical extremists attacked the temple openly in broad daylight during this ruthless attack which was conducted in two phases the rath of lord jagannath deities of shri prabhupad all iskon books residence of devotees three vehicles and furniture etc were burned to the ground in addition to this book stalls computers printers cctv and other paraphernalia in general have been destroyed these radical extremists have looted more than half a crore of cash from the donation boxes cash boxes and ornaments of the deities three persons were murdered kartik chandra saha shintal chaitanya das and prant chandra das whose dead body was found floating in an adjacent lake for the specific purpose of murdering him they have with sharp weapons stabbed in 12 places the body of nimai chandra das nimai chandra was almost killed he is still in a critical condition they have severely beaten all the residential devotees of the temple whose physical condition remains critical so most of the devotees are still in the hospital unfortunately i must share with you that on thursday 14th october 2021 in spite of the declaration of honorable prime minister to give exemplary punishment the government had not taken any visible steps yet to be apprehended and punished the wicked culprits therefore on next day muslim radical extremists brutally attacked the chaumani iskon temple kali mandir rama thakur mandir loknath mandir gm sen hall of chatagram along with hundreds and hundreds of houses shops and institutions of hindus muslim radical extremists completely destroyed by arson village after village in different districts of bangladesh such as ramu narsinghnagar bhola pabna sulmogonj it is crystal clear who the culprits are declaring openly in social media and on the streets to attack temples repeatedly carrying out such atrocities again and again the government should take determined steps to administer exemplary the severe punishment and not permit muslim radical extremists to perform such atrocities in broad daylight 
which brings shame upon the respected society of Bangladesh in the eyes of the people of the world. As a conscious citizen, I ask you, who will take the responsibility for the failure of administration in allowing such loathsome incidences to occur? Attacking temples, breaking deities, is this not disrespect of religion? Are the Hindus so offensive in following their Sanatan Dharma religion that even the government of Bangladesh is not prepared to accept accountability in regard to these actions? We are offering our sincere prayers to the Lord and condolences to the families for those who have given up their lives in such kind of painful circumstances. In 1975, Radical extremists, ruthless acts of terror occurred profusely after the despicable murder of our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheng Mujibur Rahman, who had a vision of non-sectarian society of Bangladesh. In order to fulfill the dream of Bangabandhu, it is of utmost importance that justice is urgently needed to serve to such hateful criminals. In spite of the cordial attempts of our honorable prime minister, some miscreant administrative officers are not collaborating in regard to the administration of justice in response to such abhorrent incidents. We demand accountability for such abominable incidences which have tarnished respect for our glorious republic from nations worldwide. We request the Honorable Prime Minister of the Republic of Bangladesh to immediately form a justice tribunal to severely punish all these culprits. In Bangladesh, we have constitutional rights of observing our own religion faithfully. And we wish to live peacefully in this country and perform our religious rights. We request proper treatment provided from the government for those who suffered injuries during these atrocities. In addition, we demand compensation to the families of murdered and injured and reimbursement for re-establishing and repairing burnt houses institutions and temples. Hare Krishna, sincerely, General Secretary of ISKCON Bangladesh. So, we can hear uh, exactly in details of what exactly has happened. I would request uh, Ramesh to share some of the pictures which are uh, sort of showing the way it has happened in uh, ISKCON. It is other temples, Durga temples, that pictures I do not have because I did not have access to them. But we can just show them. So this is the uh, uh, this is a gift shop which you can see that you know it has a lot many books and there are kanti malas and chanting beads and various paraphernalia which uh, ISKCON has in every temple. The next shop. Yeah, these are the devotees now after vandalizing they are very sad and uh, next uh, this is a mridanga which has been broken uh, this is uh, historical for iskon because uh, even 500 years back uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu when he was present at that time the local kazi whose name was chand kazi had broken this uh, mridanga and that, that, that place is of historical importance in Bangla, uh, West Bengal, in Mayapur. Uh, this is called as Khola Danga. This is called as Khola. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at that time, five years back, years back, he took out a procession with thousands and thousands of people to the Chand Kaji and actually uh, threatened him with uh, very logical arguments based on uh, our scriptures that why are you doing this we have our right to uh, even though you are ruling we have a right to perform what we are supposed to so this is the brudanga which has been desecrated there next again this is a shop these photos have been thrown here and there glass is broken next 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 yeah, this is the Jagannath Ratha because every every Iskon temple, prominent Iskon temple has a uh, Rathayatra ceremony of Lord Jagannath, Baladeva and Subhadra every year in all the countries. And you can see that a Rath has been uh, burned completely. Next. 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 
so the vehicles and whatever the devotees were using that is all burnt now next please next so this is uh, swami prabhupada's uh, murti is every day it's in every temple of iskon that was also burnt in the fire which was uh, created by the burning the rath so it's a very sad picture which we the iskon people are, are very affected by next so <clears throat> this is another picture where actually the, the murti of prabhupada was thrown into this fire next that's what it is stated in the bangla writing so everything is broken next yeah next so this is i this particular uh, graph i have taken from the uh, bangladesh census government uh, sources so we can see that uh, from 1950 onwards uh, how the uh, hindus have been declining steadily uh, there were 23.2 in 1950 and today they have come to 9.6 so you can see it's a very very clear graph and the way it is going on uh, that's the looks like that is the aim of the people to make it zero and uh, this is a wake up wake up call for all of us because the same thing happened in kashmir in our own country it happened in pakistan i do not have the data from pakistan but i must tell you that uh, in the 1990s many iskon devotees one of them is a doctor uh, they had to flee <clears throat> from uh, pakistan to india and to many other countries and now they are settled everywhere else because they are also feeling the heat of the atrocities so uh, i think the slides are over we can uh, take away the screen now having said what is happening in bangladesh <clears throat> particular to iskon devotees uh, i will just give some background on how what is iskon and what is iskon doing and why it is being targeted like this apart from the overall hindu targeting iskon particularly also has been targeted very badly in other countries also so iskon was founded by swami prabhupada in 1966 as international society for krishna consciousness uh, in new york uh, he was from kolkata and he traveled at a very advanced stage of 70 years and in 10 years uh, because he took a message of gita and gave to the world uh, which basically in the western countries at that time the hippy movement was there people were not very happy the way the wars were happening the first world war second world war and then the vietnam war and people those who are youngsters they are not finding any aim of life in that at that time prabhupada presented the sanatan dharma through bhagavad gita and many many people young people followed him and after that within 10 years uh, it spread all over the globe and as of today uh, we have more than 650 major centers and much many more sub centers 65 farm communities all over the world there are more than 15 medical establishments including bhaktivedanta hospital which are affiliated with iskon more than 520 million books have been distributed for mainly the gita all over the world in 80 languages and it has a following of almost 12 million people out of that about <clears throat> maybe 1 lakh people are already they are sort of dikshit that means they are initiated and these are all uh, not only india but it's all over the world practically every country including china russia everywhere and they are the people who bring in a lot of uh, harmony in the society so various people uh, have been targeted at various times uh, we were just talking about south africa but there another african country in the 1989 90 the devotees were actually taken out from the temple or again by the muslim rulers they were taken on the sea shore and shot dead 
at point blank range at that time again international media and others did not take any cognizance of this then in 2004 in the kazakhstan which is about 70 to 80% muslim dominated population the ispan had its own land which they purchased they created their own community and many devotees were staying there and the government after they flourished they illegally brought in laws they created a new law and they raised 26 houses to the ground and the case went on they were trying to appeal and ultimately uh, even today uh, they have not got justice they have made laws which are completely suppressing any other form of religious practice in uh, Kazakhstan. Then, as I told you, Pakistan also, very, very many, many devotees have come back from Pakistan to India and other countries. And Bangladesh, we just saw what has happened. So with this uh, understanding, and even in India, what has happened in Kashmir, and what keeps on happening in other cities of India, particularly in Kerala and many other places, wherever there is a domination of Muslims, whether the majority of the Muslims, immediately uh, the other faiths, and particularly the Hindu faiths, uh, they cannot survive there because they are targeted as kafirs, non-believers, or the believers in the deities. And because of this, the population, even in India, in any locality, as soon as they come in, uh, the temples, the functions, public functions, everything takes a different shape. And therefore, now it is time for all of us as Hindus, who have been otherwise very, very peaceful, we accommodate each and every other form of religion as part of uh, being God's own uh, given intelligence to those people to approach him in a different way. We accept this. We are accommodated. But others are not ready to accommodate us. This is what is very clear. And therefore, uh, whenever we hear Dr. Swami, for example, he always talks about this uh, concepts of Darul Islam and Darul Haram. So how yeah. they have very, very clear understanding of how to go forward. And we become targets to it because the Kshatriya nature of the Hindu population has gone down. The Hindu population also has artificially convinced itself that, okay, we are secular and therefore we are not supposed to talk of all these things. <laughs> if I am a proud Hindu, then I am, I am communal. Somebody can be proud Muslim, somebody can be proud Christian, but I cannot be a proud Hindu. As soon as I am proud Hindu, then immediately we, I am termed as communal. So these are the thought processes which have to change. And now it's a time that the feminine aspect, the dharma, Sanatana dharma is very, very accommodative, very loving, very happy, very joyful. It is very natural. And therefore, all over the pe world, uh, people are accepting it by voluntary choice, not by force. Everywhere you see, whether it is a process of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, whether it is Ramdev Baba, whether it is ISKCON, people are adopting it voluntarily. And with this joyful aspect of Sanatana Dharma, another side is the Rudra aspect, the, the, the Shakti. Sometimes Durga, when she comes in a fury, then even the Masculine aspect of God is put to shame. <laughs> she is so powerful. And uh, as again, I am repeating Dr. Swami's own statement that you know, the <laughs> in Brahma's cabinet, all these ladies are there. They are <laughs> all, like, including the defense, is handled by them. So, probably we need to look at that very seriously. And I would like now Dr. Swami to comment on these things. And if there are any questions, I can. Yeah, <clears throat> excellent. Thank you very much. 
You see, uh, um, our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, is an admirer of Sardar Patel. Let me give you an incident of Sardar Patel. Um, in 1948, um, maybe uh, January 1948, uh, early in the first week or second week of January, uh, there was a massive riot going on in uh, what was called those days as East Pakistan and now called uh, Bangladesh, there was a butchering, tremendous butchering of Hindus going on. So Sardar Patel um, saw that, uh, you know, Pakistan was not hearing him. So he flew to Calcutta and uh, held a public meeting. And a huge crowd came. And he said, um, I'm telling Pakistan, uh, stop this butchering of Hindu, Hindus right now. If you can't do it, then we are ready to go and do it. So this is a warning. And you will be surprised that next day these riots stopped. This public meeting was in the evening in, in Calcutta. So somewhere we have to tell Bangladesh. And Bangladesh is, a, it's a, you know, it's all namak haram. They, one crore Bangladeshis escaped the butchery and rape of the Pakistani army and came to India as refugees in 1971. One crore. And uh, we fed them, we kept them, we looked after them. And our soldiers went to battle to create Bangladesh. And today... The Prime Minister makes a very soft comment to the Prime Minister of, uh, of Bangladesh, you know, that this must stop. So she said in a, in, a, in a public statement that all these people are provoked by what you are doing in your country. I've never heard anything so absurd. You know, they, they may be here and there, but... Uh, I have not seen mobs go, uh, you know, from one uh, street to another uh, targeting his, uh, Muslims. And if they do, we will condemn it. We will fight it. We will, uh, you know, we will not keep quiet. And we will not tolerate any prime minister saying, oh, uh, we are being provoked by what is happening in Bangladesh. So there is a feeling that no one will stand by the Hindu. And therefore, he is a fair, a fair target. Now, the population of Hindu, as you have brought out in the graph, has been going down. Population of Muslims in India is going up. Uh, and uh, same thing in Pakistan. We were 12% in 1947. And uh, now, I don't think we even 1%. And uh, there have been forcible conversions, left, right, and center. And now with Bangla, uh, Afghanistan also, this has started. The Hindus are being targeted. The Sikhs are being targeted. So, and then you find Hindus are being targeted in the United States, not because they are Hindus, but because the uh, Christian population there, and especially these extremist Christians, evangelists, and so on, they feel that, you know, these people come from India, and my God, the amount of wealth they accumulates pure jealousy but the target is the hindu and so i think uh, we must demand from our government you know show some uh, you know no pleading no statements nothing make it clear that if hindus are being targeted because they are hindus then india retains the right to intervene like the israelis have said if you if you shoot one israeli uh, we'll send a rocket to your country, uh, to your country or uh, federation or whatever it is. Or what they've done with ha uh, Hamas attack. They've silenced them. There's no Hamas attack now. Uh, so uh, what I feel is you see this everywhere in every, uh, every part of the world. Hindus being targeted and they're the most peace-loving communities in each of these places. And yet they're being targeted because they are doing well or they are refusing to convert. And so I think uh, we need, uh, government needs to uh, have policy and speak in a language which teaches them. I think in Bangladesh, we should say, 
we came into bangladesh territory to liberate you people now if you are not going to stop it then we will come to liberate the hindus um in the same way that we came in 1971 to liberate you that kind of uh, uh threat only will work with bangladesh because it's been going on for and now even the prime minister of herself says that because of uh, provocations uh, provocative events in uh, in uh, india therefore our people are encouraged what is this i mean uh, so so now we see you are burning our uh, durga baba uh, mata's uh, pandal uh, well shall we do it here too in the name when the eid comes here shall we get into um, into masjids and uh, wreck the wreck the place so i think uh, people are taking it for granted that the hindus will not retaliate and i think it's time to put them wise to it that like in bhagavad gita we can say in the end give give us only five villages and when the when duryodhan says no not even on the the space on on the on the edge of a needle uh, then we go to war and that's mahabharat and i think we should now tell bangladesh we can't take it any more next time we will invade yes sir so one of the names of arjun is uh, vibhatsu you have heard arjun had 10 names so one of the names is vibhatsu vibhatsu means a person who puts the other person in shock <laughs> it's like a shocking treatment so something like that you know the arjuna uh, kind of a uh, vibhatsu type of thing has to be seen from our angle that what can be done that's right Dr. Swami, I have a, sorry. Go on. Dr. Swami, I have a question. Yes. Virtually since independence, uh, when various parties, as, um, uh, predominantly the Congress party has been in power, and now BJP is in power, Modi is in power, all these attacks take place on Hindus inside India, outside India, in our neighboring uh, subcontinent. Why is our... Uh, central government seem to be not acting and acting or acting tough in these issues what do you think is the cause that our government doesn't come to the rescue of hindus across the globe and what how can we do it because hindus are such large numbers hindus are in a, a predominant uh, position in many of the countries why can't our government act tough and take action and what would you propose this is what our viewers from across the globe has been asking us on various questions in different forms on our chat box see um, um problem with uh, our political leaders is they are keen for uh international recognition and uh, they are scared that they will be boycotted and uh, and so on and therefore they uh, they bend to a great extent and uh, put up with a whole lot of nonsense you see and the hindus are the sufferers uh, i think uh, leave aside all the other countries demonstrate at one place that for hindus we will take military action and bangladesh is the obvious one because we have a moral authority to do so having created bangladesh protected the, these people uh, mujibur uh, uh, rahman when he was in jail we had warned the pakistanis that if you touch the his hair we will attack west pakistan also after finishing with east pakistan that kind of uh, language has to be done even in the case of leave uh, hindu what about uh, the china thing are they ready to declare them as an aggressor we are not ready to do that we are ready to sit with them talk with them now we are going to have invite the pakistani uh, national security advisor to a conference to india about what 
So this desire to be known as popular, not controversial, one of the most, the British invented this word controversial. And everybody is afraid to be called controversial. Oh, he's a controversial person. What does that mean? <laughs> he has a view different from yours. But you don't want to be known. You want to be known as a loved person all over the world, world leader, global leader. So you don't want to uh, to stand up for what uh, you should be standing up for. That is the, behind it. I don't know what other people in the uh, in our uh, team think, but this is how I think. Demonstrate like Sardar Patel once, and you'll see everybody will fall in line. Dr. Swami, um, I just looked at, uh, I mean, uh, before the show, I looked at what the government has done so far to this. To my knowledge, at least for the past four days, there is not even a single tweet from either the Ministry of External Affairs, the, the Minister Jay Shankar, the Prime Minister, condemning these things. It's just that some apparent PTI news item saying that Modi has said something. It is just, it, it, if you can't, if you're so afraid of even Bangladesh, I mean, why would China even consider you as a, you know, a serious force to reckon with? I mean, like what you said, if we, they've come and occupied our territory next what? I mean, they're just going to take India for granted uh, as a cowardice, nothing but cowards only have a Nobel intentions. So why would you want to have even engaged? I mean, it's very easy to engage in China next what? Next word, Myanmar will start attacking India. Then, I mean, where is our stature? I mean, because we, as you see, uh, in your recent trip to Sri Lanka, Dr. Swami, it is very apparent that India has lost confidence of its friendly neighbors, erstwhile very friendly neighbors, be it Sri Lanka, even Bangladesh to some extent, and everybody is starting to say, uh, act, you know, like India is nothing, you know. So it is a shameful decline to where we are today. Bhutan to uh, to. Uh, to add to your, uh, Bhutan has had a, a pact with uh, with uh, China. Uh, with China, and they have declared that it, it will be a secret pact. I mean, that means everywhere, be told. everywhere, Hindus are easily persecuted, and as as, as typical Hindus are, I mean, either the worst of the lot is different. The Tambrans from the south are the worst because they don't, they actually don't have have a backbone. On, um, so, absolutely cowards, and anywhere we go, all we do is cry and say, you know, the 56 inch or the uh, Hindu Virat, uh, some person will do Hindu Hirdai Samrat. There is nothing that is going to happen. Doctor. I mean, continuously, we are not establishing our foothold and saying that you touch one, we will touch 10. The, 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 the concept has not sunk in. I mean, I, I, I'm sad to say, I mean, what Dr. Sankhya had shown, obviously, there are some more graphic elements to this in showing how that young boy was brutally hacked it's just you uh, know gut-wrenching and and the indian government is doing nothing i mean whatever we say we can discuss this all we do is tomorrow's it cell is going to abuse what else they have they're just jobless people they'd rather walk over the dead bodies of hindus to abuse you and the vhs it's just shameful and they will continue to defend what's happening uh, with the complete nonchalance and uh, completely ignoring the plight of hindus abroad Arvind, you go ahead. Ar Arvind wants to say something. Can't hear. Arvind, you are muted. Ah, okay, go ahead. Dr. Swami, uh, you and uh, Dr. Ajay Sankhi has given a very good account of what has happened uh, in Bangladesh or in uh, Pakistan in uh, recent past. But let me tell you, I've been hearing about this for the last 30 years. You know, uh, in Uganda, when Idi Amin was there in 20, 20, 25 years back, in the last phase of his uh, rule, he died in 2003, large number of Gujaratis were attacked and they were forced to move out of the Uganda. Same thing happened in Ethiopia. In Addis Ababa, a large number of Gujarati businessmen had to leave everything in Ethiopia and come out. And nothing had happened at that time. Similarly, in Fiji, a large number of Hindus and Indians were attacked in Fiji and nothing happened. Of course, Fiji has one of the largest number of migrant population of, of originally Indians. Now, in March, March of this year, 
one member of parliament had asked a question in the parliament about attacks on Indians abroad, not Hindus, but the question was, the minister uh, replied that out of 141 countries that he had listed, there were 94 attacks in last three years, 94 attacks <laughs> and 21 countries, 21 countries. And these countries are UK, Algeria, Belgium, Canada, Chile, China, Russia, Seychelles, Sri Lanka, Zimbabwe, Thailand, Suriname, Poland, New Zealand, Myanmar, Madagascar, Ireland, France, and the king of these attacks has been Ethiopia and USA. In Ethiopia, there have been 16 attacks in the last three years. In US and uh, Ireland, there have been 14 attacks each in these two countries. Poland, eight, Canada, six, and France, five. These are the leaders. And as I said, even in the friendly countries like Sri Lanka or Thailand. Now, Ramesh mentioned something about Tam Brands. Uh, let me just tell you, Malaysia and Singapore yeah. has large number of Tamil population, but no attack has taken place either in Malaysia or in Singapore. That is because you completely now, submit. Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, these countries have large number of Hindu temples. But these, in these countries, no Hindu temple has been attacked unlike Bangladesh and Pakistan. Pakistan, of course, has large number of uh, temples because of uh, pre-partition, there is large number of Hindu population. Now, if this trend continues and you said about, uh, uh, you did not, so, uh, did not say in so many words, but I have said this in an earlier program. In India, the prime ministers have been eyeing for a Nobel Peace Prize <laughs> and in order to get the no or get nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, they do everything, they tolerate everything. And what is tolerance that we have shown is because of the international or global recognition as a Masiha or savior of mm. the, 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 the ambassadors of peace. But these ambassadors of peace have actually harmed Indians or Hindus more then now in the, the name of uh, protecting Hindus, uh, I have no uh, hesitation in saying that BJP government in 2014, when it came to power, was had promised a protection of Hindus. And he says Hindus are being attacked and this and that. Hindus are being discriminated against because of appeasement of Muslims and all that. What has happened in the last seven years is actually appeasement, appeasement and more appeasement of minorities. If you look at the funds uh, uh, allocated for the uh, uh, minorities uh, uh, departments or special institutions which have been created has gone up 300, 400 times in last seven, uh, last seven years. And nobody questions these. Now, question what? is, uh, Ramesh was saying that what has happened in last four days? I'm saying what has happened in the last 25 years or 30 years, nothing has happened, whether it is Bajpayee government or Manmohan Singh government or Modi government, nobody has done anything except Kadi Ninda. What is this Kadi Ninda? <laughs> Kadi Ninda is, we condemn. And I was reading this reply of Murli the Rao, <laughs> in, uh, which I've just now read out to you in terms of number of attacks. The action taken by the government is our embassies and high commissions have protested. <laughs> in those countries. Now, if this is the only action we can take, then what, what for we have a central government? And first, second thing is, uh, uh, even in Bangladesh, suppose we say that why Hindus are being attacked, Dr. Swami has given a solution that threaten them. Tell them in very simple words, in black and white, that we are going to protect the Hindu population there. And if you do not protect yourself, then we will come and protect you. But the question is, uh, uh, why don't we declare ourselves a Hindu Rashtra? We have, Hindus are, have only one country in this world. And that is India. Of course, earlier we had Hindu Rashtra in Nepal. But Nepal is now uh, uh, gone to communist and is no more a Hindu Rashtra. So if we have Hindus living here 85% or maybe a little less than 85%, why don't we declare Hindu Rashtra? We will have a face. We will have a standing. We will have a position to say that we are a Hindu country and any country where Hindus are targeted or Hindus are attacked, we will retaliate. 
Yeah, even a small country can Israel can do that, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, Dr. Swami. Okay, let me add two points. Hindu government at the center, Dr. Swami. I'm, I'm afraid I have to use these words. There's a fake BJP Hindu government in center. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Dr. Swami. I have two points to add to Dr. what Swami, uh, Arvind said. Good. Go First ahead. of all, five lakh Hindus were driven out of not a foreign country. Your own country, from Kashmir, they were driven out. Even the rec uh, recently, we found that the uh, uh, Kashmiri Hindus are, who went back in the faith that now they can live under with the safe BJP government, but they have been killed. So, sir, is, let they, me they tell you, what has happened in Mushtabad in Bengal? Huh? The malice is not that in Bengal. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mushtabad, Nepal. Durga yeah. Puja was not allowed to. Yeah, uh, that, but that's a, that's a foreign country. So no, no, may, uh, you may argue it's a foreign country, it's an international matter. No, I'm saying in your own country, you have not been no. able to uh, protect the Hindus. I'm mentioning Murshidabad, which is in Bengal. Yeah, Murshidabad has happened also. And two days back, two days back in Ajamgarh, in Uttar Pradesh, Yogi's Uttar yes. Pradesh. One yes. person went with a gun and saying that you can't have a Durga Pandal here in Azamgarh. Right. right, correct. What are we doing? So, therefore, uh, it is a malaise that needs to be rectified. It's uh, uh, And you have to demonstrate it somewhere. And the demonstration, because uh, you see, by the way, in your, um, um, you said there's not been a single uh, incident against Hindus in Malaysia. In Maybe last not in the last uh, uh, two, three, four years. Yes. But I have a list of things that have happened since uh, April 21, 2006 onwards. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Selva Kalyaman uh, Man, uh, Temple in Kuala Lumpur was reduced to rubble uh, after the city hall, uh, uh, at the request of the local Muslim population, sent bulldozers to knock it down. Similarly, there have been other examples. I've got them all here. So yeah. it's not true that in Malaysia, Malaysia, there is a tension because I have those Tamils are in touch with me. Okay. You see, uh, only when the uh, in Sri Lanka, it was only when the uh, Tamils got to be to uh, to become uh, extremists, they became terrorists. You see, uh, that uh, there was this uh, retaliation from the Sinhalas. There were, of course, tensions about. Uh, the division of jobs and so on in Sri Lanka. But when these people decided to target um, uh, uh, civilian population, the LTT and others, then only the, in Sri Lanka it happened. But no temple was ever touched by uh, the uh, government of uh, Sri Lanka. But here, the, the attack is directly on the temples. So I think, first of all, we should now take such steps that the bulk of the Kashmiri Pandits who are driven out should be restored, should be brought in and empowered to live there. And, uh, in, and, and those who try to uh, kill them, they should be killed uh, first. At the same time, our neighboring countries where Hindus are targeted, we should send the army there. And uh, tell them have a warning that if you don't stop it, we'll send the army. Uh, not uh, goody goody things and low voice and soft voices uh, to speak about it. So then only a Virat Hindu stands up. Then only the Hindu will be respected. All right, Jagdish, you had a point, then I have one. You can go ahead. No, I only wanted to uh, say what Dr. Swami may have corrected Arvind. There have been a lot of attacks in Malaysia or Hindu temples and Hindu establishment. And the Malaysian Hindu population has been petitioning Dr. Swami and other people. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, keep the record straight that Malaysia... No, no, I, just want, I just want to say the, the uh, reply of the minister which I read out gives the details about the attacks in last three years. 2018, ah, 2019 okay. <laughs> and 2020. And yeah, the numbers yeah. also are only three years. If we add last 10 years, maybe the numbers will be much more in the US and Ethiopia and other things. 
So yeah, these numbers this... are also only these three years. 94 yeah, attacks. What... 94 attacks in last three years only. Okay. Because there so have been, true. if you do a Google search, you will find a lot of attacks and a lot of viewers are watching the show from Malaysia and they have been telling us that no, Malaysia also a lot of temples have been attacked. Anyway, this so was a certainly short... Certainly, there may be a difference between the official record and unofficial record. This is the official record we Muldi the Rao gave on 24th of March in Lok Sabha. Dr. Swami, what about the Rohingya Muslims who came in? Why did India open up the borders? We were supposed to kick them back. Amit Shah said not one person will stay back in this country. We continue to keep tolerating this. At what point are we going to say no? By the way, there are Rohingya Hindus also. And they were attacked by the Rohingya Muslims in, uh, in uh, uh, Myanmar. There have been four incidents which I have got a, a report of. Hmm. So... Rohingyas, why I am against the Rohingyas coming to India is in 1944, they declared that Jinnah was their leader. They, 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 they spurned the offer of Jawaharlal Nehru to be, become part of India. And then when uh, Pakistan was created, uh, there was a, uh, they, they, were, they, they were pushed to uh, go to uh, Ma Ma Myanmar. In Myanmar, th there was a constituent assembly which was uh, held. In the constituency, uh, constituent assembly, two uh, Rohingya members were um, um, uh, two Rohingya members were um, uh, um, uh, nominated, and both of them said, "We don't want to be part of Myanmar. We want to be part of Pakistan. Please send us to Pakistan." So therefore, when they, we, India is not a dharamshala that anyone can come here with chatai and, uh, you know, uh, put it out like, like in a dharamshala and go to sleep here. So that's why I'm against the Rohingyas being allowed into India. Anyway, Dr. we Swami, have crossed have, the time. So, No, Dr. Swami, I have a final question. With a huh? lot of fanfare, the yes. CAA was approved in parliament. That is the... Yes. Bill, but yes. and uh, there was a lot of this thing. You supported it, and you have been campaigning for it. But why has yes. the government yes. uh, been shy to frame rules under CAA to finally yes. implement the CAA? Yes. So the rules have been deliberately delayed. There's nothing. What is the rule there? There's no rules to be done. There's only where to give the passport application. Uh, where, 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 you know where to be domiciled, all these things, you see. So, therefore, it's, you know, it's not uh, there. So, are, anyway, you saying, are you saying that the government, having bought the CAA, has not fully implemented yeah, it? No, no, no. They have been afraid of the no, American pressure. No refugees. I am telling you the bare fact is that we have, because of American pressure, we have gone slow on it. Because we didn't include Muslims. Uh, when the, These are only people who have been religiously persecuted. Which Muslim is per religiously persecuted in Pakistan? Perhaps the Shias and the Ahmadiyyas. The Shias go to Iran. They don't come to us. Dr. Swami, in short, how would we uh, tackle this situation now, Dr. Swami? What should the Indian government do? What should the Indian government do about uh, Bangladesh? Bangladesh? Yeah. Well, you should tell them, all right, you have, it's over now. Don't let it not happen again, because if it does, we will come and uh, ourselves uh, uh, put the matter out. We'll send our troops like we did it to save you and create your country. That's the only, so I mean, no point going to you. Yeah, no, 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 no arguments. It's too okay. late, too, too, it's past that date. Okay. okay. Uh, Dr. Sanke, do you have any other comments you want to make, Dr. Sanke? Uh, no, I think uh, as far as I'm no, I, I'm, uh, I'm done. I, I just wanted to uh, say it here to all of you that uh, VHS Maharashtra will be supported. There is a youth group in uh, Mumbai who's working very diligently on uh, sort of getting young people to protest in front of the Bangladesh. Uh, Consulate. High Commission in Mumbai, mm -hmm. and we just will support it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we are planning to be there. Okay. Okay. Arvind okay. 
Uh, yeah, uh, this is a, a issue uh, which concerns each and every person in India. It is not only Hindus. I mean, uh, 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 when we categorize them as Indians, and Indians are being targeted and attacked everywhere. And as the minister says, that Indians are to be protected. Of course, he did not say that Hindus are to be protected. But all right, name it. You use any nomenclature, it doesn't matter. But as long as our culture, our uh, religious practices are not hampered, our uh, uh, people are not uh, uh, targeted uh, with violence, uh, and government of India takes such action, this is the call, uh, uh, wake up call, as Dr. Ajay Sankhya had said in the beginning. And we should take up what Dr. Swami said in the last four days, what has happened is really alarming and uh, it is to be condemned. And of course, we have seen this condemnation alone is not enough. We have had, as I said, I use the word kadi ninda. Hum kadi ninda bahut samay se karte aa rahe hain. Koi bhi ghatna aisi hoti hai, hum kate hain kadi ninda karte hain, kadi ninda karte hain. But this kadi ninda is not delivering. Nothing is happening. And the uh, situation in country is slightly different, though I did mention about uh, uh, West Bengal or uh, Uttar Pradesh, uh, uh, back, uh, background of uh, uh, Gorakhpur, near Gorakhpur, place called Ajamgarh. In Ajamgarh also it happened, but that has to be tackled at a different level. But in Indians living abroad, Hindus living abroad have to be protected. They, they, are, they went as migrant labor in many other countries. UAE, uh, uh, their large number of people, Gulf countries, their large number of people, Europe, USA, uh, their large number of Indians, Hindus, they have their different uh, uh, religious uh, places of worship and uh, they, these have to be protected and the culture has to be protected. And as Dr. Swami said, ultimately it is born out of jealousy. People have been very, very affluent. They have earned by hard uh, labor, they have earned the money and therefore they become target because of jealousy and this jealousy must stop. Government of India must, in fact, I for one would advocate, I know, I don't know many people would agree or not agree that Hindu Rashtra government should declare, Indian government should declare India as a Hindu Rashtra. In practice, we may be 80% or 90% Hindus. And uh, uh, we may say that pra practically it is Hindu Rashtra. But what Mohan Bhagwaji said just two days back, <laughs> in fact, he has raised his concern about the population growth. Dr. Ajay Sankhya is on the chart. And we know it is happening in India. It is happening in India. The, 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 the growth rate of population of uh, uh, some minorities, not all minorities, it is really uh, very high. And uh, uh, some... Um, um, uh, on Twitter, one person has actually quoted that in by uh, 21st, 22nd century, beginning of the 26th century, 40% population of India will be Muslim if we project these uh, growth rates. Therefore, something must be done. The population control bill in India is also one of the major issues. Maybe in one of the uh, next episode or some other episode of... Uh, uh, words of wisdom, Gyan Ganga will take up these issues. Uh, the viewers have been supporting us in large numbers. Jagdish uh, said 141 countries uh, we are viewed and uh, we, we thank our viewers for this kind of support. We thank uh, uh, the, the speakers today, Dr. Ajay Sankhe and uh, Dr. Swami. Uh, my co-host Jagdish Shetty Ji deserves thanks. Ramesh Swami deserves thanks and so does the uh, technical team led by Ashish Shetty. Uh, Gadgi Rakesh, Ishwarayar, Swaminathan, Tejas, and Vishal Mehta. We will be meeting next Sunday again at 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time with a new episode and a burning topic with Dr. Subramanian Swami. Till then, viewers, thank you very much. Namaskar. Jai Hind. Jai Hind.